Hey guys, you're welcome to WTSWGS. What they say versus what God says. My name is Marvin Kim, and I am delighted to have you here. So today we'll be looking at something I have titled "Waiting Them Talk." Waiting them talk. Now, if you are not from Nigeria, you may be wondering what this means. This is an expression in Pidgin English, which means. What did they say? Now, when used, this expression paints a picture that a group of persons are being addressed by a person of authority, but the person asking that question missed that point, right? And so he's trying to ask a neighbor what was said. It's like asking information from your neighbor when you could have simply gotten it from the source. And also, there is this game we used to play in secondary school. We used to call it the gossip game. Now that game was fun because you know, the first person to start the gossip would whisper something in his or her neighbor's ear, and then he would pass this piece of information down to each column or each roll of the class till the last person hears it. One notable thing about this game was the fact that the piece of information that went out. Was never the same piece of information that got back to the end of the class. Uh-uh. Ah, somebody was going to alter it, maliciously, mischievously, or because of you know human error. At some point, something is either added, subtracted, or changed. At times, the statement is so altered that what you hear at the end of the class had nothing to do with the information that went forth in the first place. This tells us something. That any information relayed through a channel always has a chance, no matter how small, that the channel would corrupt the piece of information that was sent through it. Check it any time. In the book of Acts, there was a group of Christians who sought to find out what the four one one of God's word was to them. Acts seventeen from verse ten to verse twelve says. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also. Honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men not a few. So many things come to mind hearing this scripture. It says the word of God was preached to the Berean Christians, as to many of us. But it also tells us that they were deliberate about how they received the word of God. It says they received it with readiness of mind. They received the word with the right attitude. But they did not stop there. The Bible also says that they returned to the Word and searched the Scriptures to see whether these things were so. This served as confirmation of the Spirit to them, as well as an opportunity to further internalize the Word of God on their own turf. These are the things that make you grounded in the Word of God. Another thing we see, as verse twelve says, is that many of them believed. And little wonder, the Bible says, "Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God." So, when one exposes his spirit to the word of God, faith increases. This acts as a stepping stone for growth, because the word that is useful to you in the day of need is the one that you have ingested into your spirit, not the one that your pastor preached, not the one that your friend said. No matter how holy or righteous or law-abiding your friend is, the word you receive. Is the word that is real to you? That is the one that will minister life to you in the day of need. That is where you will get rema from. So we see that by the word faith grows. With consistent use, faith is built. What does the word of God say about you? Find out that word for yourself. There are things others cannot do for you. E.g., fellowshipping with the word of God. Prayer, giving, winning souls to Christ, and such. These are actually the things that build you as you do them. It is the process that builds you. So you are the only one that can do them for yourself. No one can help you. So what should you do? 
go to the word find out what the word of god says for yourself and how can you do this number one study the word daily not reading for devotion or religious sakes but take it as god's word to you for that day what is god saying to me today be intentional about it take note of what god is saying to you about that verse write it down also make a habit on meditating on specific verses in the word over prolonged periods it will bring the word of god alive in your spirit and you will see the same verse in different dimensions today it is saying this tomorrow it is saying that and all of them are to build you onto the perfect man that god intends number two go to church in that gathering of believers through the man of god over your life you will get access to the word of god this coupled with your personal study will give you insight into god's intention for you and will minister life to your spirit number three listen to messages especially those of the man of god over your life and then those of men of god you know who preach the truth of the word of god not what people with itchy ears want to hear but be careful what you hear and be careful how you hear it don't give your ears to sources that are not consistent with the word of god the word of god is non-negotiable number four read spiritual books the guide for this is the same as listening to messages be sure that these sources are consistent with the word of god because any so-called message or book that is not aligned with the word of god is to the extent of its inconsistency void because it is inconsistent with the word it will lack the capacity to minister life or communicate grace to you the hearer it cannot cause a change in your life but at the end of the day the word of god in its undiluted and unreported form is the best thing for you it is why you must be deliberate about your word life because it affects your faith work your love work and indeed every area of your life and must not be taken lightly Amen. So when you take the word of God lightly and the things of this world seriously, it shows that you have failed and you have your priorities mixed up. Refuse to be careless with spiritual growth or be engaged in spiritual carelessness. You cannot afford to leave these things to chance. non challenge was the things of God shows where your priorities lie. If you care, you won't rely on hearsay for spiritual growth. What is hearsay? What one has heard that he is repeating is that simple. It is information that was heard by one person about another person or about an event for which he was not present and therefore cannot adequately substantiate or defend. You were not there. How can you say this thing is real? How can you defend it? You did not read it in the word of God. How can you really say that this is the mind of God? There is no confirmation on your inside from the spirit. Let me ask you this question. What if life calls you to defend that word you've heard, but you cannot because it is not real to you? That's a tragedy. So find out for yourself what the word of God says. There are things others cannot do for you. So go to the word of God. Colossians 3.16 says, let, allow, permit the word of God to dwell in you richly. Take conscious steps and efforts to have a vital relationship with the word of God refuse to be satisfied with only third party accounts of the word of god are they good yes they support what you have done in the personal place but they do not replace it seek to know god for yourself along with whatever else god will use any other person to minister to you praise god you must decide from today to know the word of god for yourself say it i decide to know the word of god for myself from today in jesus name so we've come to the end of today's episode if you were blessed by this message please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section guys i'm not even joking leave a comment you were blessed leave a comment whether it's spotify youtube wherever and then please reach out to us at the email in the description box wtswgs at gmail.com and we will get a paid copy of apocalypsis to you for free you can follow the previous episodes on youtube spotify apple podcast or google podcast this is one thing you can binge watch or binge listen to so you know spoil yourself subscribe to the channel 
if you've not subscribed get subscribed it is one click just subscribe like 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 it leave a comment and forward the link on all your